you guys don't know where I'm heading, but I have somebody I need to go see. And I think you're really going to enjoy this video. And this is part of that series that I promised I would uh, take uh, and show you guys. This is kind of the end result. We're going to go in a step-by-step -step process and show you how they got to this, to this end state. In this upcoming year, you get to see it and witness it firsthand. So anybody who's into prepping, homesteading, uh, bushcrafting, all that kind of lifestyle, you're really going to enjoy this video series. So with all that being said, let's go visit Byron and Jasmine. I'm up at, well, you guys know where I'm at. I said I was coming up to Byron and Jasmine's and that's where I'm at. But now uh, I'm gonna show you something that maybe a lot of folks don't even know existed. Okay, so Byron, what are you gonna show us here today? Well, Chuck, like I said, this is something not everybody knows about it. I had asked people for years and nobody seemed to know what it was exactly growing on top of our potato plants. And it comes to find out that you call a true potato seed. So it looks like actual little apples, they're green. Uh, we don't get a lot of them every year. This year was an abundance of them. So in that little seed there, I'm just gonna cut that open now and show you. There's probably about, I don't know, 100 to oh, 200 seeds. Wow. So if you were gonna go in the woods for some time, or as far as for storing potato for potato seed, it's a lot of weight. Each one of these has about 100, 150 potato seeds in it. You can see one there, see that? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I can see them. So instead of taking There's 50 like pounds, of, yeah, taking five. 50 uh, pound bag of potatoes for seed, you could actually use that. Now, something else that people don't know, that each one of these seeds is a specific strain of potato in its own. Now, what do you, what do you mean by that? So as the same as a woman having a child, every child is different. So the same with these seeds, that could be a blue potato, that could be a pink, that could be a white potato. And so, what, what did these come off of? Off the potato stalks. What, of, of which type of potato? A blue, a pink? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what Really? Kind of, yeah, true story. Amazing. No. Yeah, true story. So how cool is that? So you might end up with a certain potato here that's a genetic monster potato. So that's how they actually do that. They'll seed their potatoes and find certain genetic strains of potatoes that are good. And they would, they'll just genetically carry on those genetics. And that's when you buy a russet or a a long blue, that's where it originally come from, seeds like this. I never knew that. I've been planting potatoes with dad and them for years and years, and we used to use the, I think it was called the eye of the potatoes. Eye of the potato, yep. And that's how we would uh, typically plant our potatoes. So when I, when I told you earlier that Byron and Jasmine, they research things and they know it better than anybody I know in this whole area, I'm not lying. These guys are uh, under a game. Yeah, we're gonna get a whole Elon Musk and uh, get Mars uh, plant some potatoes, but I guess some auction going like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know of any uh, one couple here on the west coast of Newfoundland that really and truly lives such a minimalistic but such a rich, rich life in, in harvesting all their own foods. Okay, Byron, what do you got here? That's 40 pounds of potatoes. Potatoes? Before it was dried. So that's a dehydrated potato. Wow. 40 pounds. No. Yeah, that probably weighs, I don't know, a couple pounds. So this was once 40 pounds, and I say it's yeah. no more than five, probably about three, four pounds yeah. maybe? max, yeah. Yeah. And when you uh, restore that, put that back in water, that goes back the same as the day you cut it. So that's when we do our potatoes, our carrots, our turnip. So we actually do it with the veggie packs. So with a bottle of mousse, we have our dehydrated potato, our carrot, and our turnip. So you put a baggie down with your bottle of mousse, 20 minutes, your stew is done. And there's no weight carrying it in the bush. So Byron, is it safe to say that you guys kind of uh, do meals, prepare meals and stuff? You go out on the land, you find a lot of your, your meals. Yep. Yeah. You, you prepare meals that you can take out and eat while on the land. Yep while you're looking for future meals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, 
to me, it just makes sense. <laughs> so out there, outside, all outside is their grocery store. And when I say it's their grocery store, I mean it's their grocery store. Yep. So what else you got in here that you want to okay, show us? that's our potatoes, that's dried apples. We went picking apples uh, this week. Actually, this is some of our, we do them in a couple grades, grade A and grade B. Uh, we got 250 pounds in uh, two days. Uh, there's five different types of apples there. Uh, now also, these apples are the same as the potato seed, so people don't realize that. If you take an apple seed from a gala apple, that's not going to give you a gala apple tree. Every seed is different. No. So every one of these apples that we picked are from apple cores that's been trolled from somebody over the years, which is its own strain of apple. So that's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. I would always say it's very interesting. <laughs> that's some carrots. That's probably about uh, 20 pounds of carrots. Dehydrate it. Wicked. Mm -hmm. Now, do you eat any de dehydrated food as dehydrated food, like uh, like uh, like maybe apple chips or? Uh, that's it. We just pretty much apple chips. So you don't rehydrate them. You just kind of eat them like as is, or uh, do you rehydrate? We eat them for snacks and run the wood stuff it out. But you can rehydrate them for apple pies or put them with your oatmeal. Or it comes back exactly the same as you just cut that apple. It's yeah. as fresh as the day it was it was picked. It's really amazing. Yeah. That's uh, the onions. That's dehydrated onions. Jazzy's doing some in the house right now. You go and have a chat with her in a minute if you like. Okay. She's got, uh, we got probably 150 pounds of onions dehydrating uh, today. This is our chaga. Oh, nice. We harvest, so we drink mostly, uh, most of our teas is either chaga or dandelion tea for the most part. And uh, wait now, uh, I think earlier in the year he had me drinking some it might have been lemon and spruce tip tea, or yep. water. Yep, we've got lots of that, lots of uh, lemon balm. Jazzy has dried, she all grew herself. Uh, Myron, I think you might have even had uh, a little bit of turkey tail into it or something too, that concoction. Oh, had that a concoction, concoction that was turkey tail, amadou, uh, chaga, and red belt of polypore. Wow. So that's four different uh, polypore species here. All have their own uh, municipal properties as far as antibacterial, anti municipal, and, and a million different ways. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you, uh, I always thought that I was pretty good at living off the land. And I'm going to be the first to admit that I don't even go an eighth of the way that these guys go. That's our dried peas. Okay, and is, are these uh, uh, beach peas? No, it's peas we grew ourselves. We do have beach peas though. Yes, we do. Uh, we don't have them here, they're in the house somewhere, but that's a regular pea that we grew. Uh, juniper berries, that's we pick a lot of juniper berries for our tea also. Uh, mushrooms, that's one bag of mushrooms we had uh, just picked. So what kind of mushrooms are they, Byron? That's actually a fat cat mushroom. A fat cat. Fat cat is the short name for them. My game pronounced the Latin term for them. Most mushrooms are all Latin terms. This is also more mushrooms. That would be a, a hedgehog mushroom. And it's all edible? All edible, yeah. And we have probably eight or nine different types of mushrooms dried right now. So right now you guys are seeing the end product of uh, some, just some of the stuff. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking just some of the stuff that these guys are up to all the time. Uh, Byron, we're going to do them a video series, right? We're going to walk them through it. Yes, sir. Yeah. From minutes finest. From uh, finding. Yeah. Uh, picking, I guess. Yeah. Preparing. Yep. And preserving. Yep. Full processing from going out foraging it to ready to put on your table. And, and uh, what about the other wild edibles? Uh, like, uh, I know you do something with. I don't even know what the proper name of. We used to call them like uh, elephant ears or mile a minutes. I don't know what the proper name on those, but you make jelly and stuff oh, with they're, those. Oh, they're absolute superfood, yeah. And actually, the roots of that plant is used for anybody with Lyme disease. It's supposed to be one of the best things out there. Guys, what was I just talking about on my channel? About the rabbits and the ticks and the Lyme disease, and now we got the black-legged ticks here. Nine different types of ticks we have on the island now. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah. Well, well we got lots of elephant ears, so it's yeah. a good way to uh, combat that. Wicked. Yeah. 
Yeah. And there's so many other things we have, too. We can make jellies out of that. Jazzy makes uh, kombucha out of it. Uh, we do teas. We do drinks. We use it in stir fries. Um, so uh, I hear the name kabuchi, yeah. and I'm, th I'm thinking, like, Japanese or something. Is that the origin of this kabuchi? The origin? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Uh, it's got that sound to it, though, eh? It, it really does, yeah. I'll have to look into that. Jazzy probably knows, actually. Yeah. Uh, she makes it all the time. But it's a, a concoction of microbes, basically. Uh, uh -huh. A lot of people now take probiotics for their body because they know how healthy it is for your immune system, so on and so forth. So that's just like a, a nuclear bomb, you could say, of microbes in your body. Good for everything from uh, colitis to Crohn's to leaky gut syndrome to, to your immune system. It's all connected. Your gut and your brain connection, of course, right? So healthy gut, healthy brain, and vice versa. And, and you know, I was on a live talk there the other day, and I, and I made a comment about, uh, you know, the foods that we eat and causing brain fog and stuff. Uh, let's ask Byron if he thinks that the foods that we buy off the shelves can cause brain fog. Oh, it's an actual scientific fact. Anybody a researcher right now, uh, especially GMO foods, uh, actually has neural inhibitors in it. So uh, your neural pathways actually get blocked off. So it almost gives you like a shaking, almost like somebody with um, Parkinson's type. Parkinson's disease, something like that. So uh, GMO foods are severely affecting everybody right now, more than people know. And you have to realize too that genetically modified foods has never been introduced into human beings. Uh, we've been here for thousands of years. There's never uh, some GMO foods, for example, we researched one tomato uh, was genetically mixed with a rat. So when your body sees that and you eats that food, uh, it sends out uh, antibodies to your body to try to fight that. So your immune system goes overactive, and that's why a lot of people end up with severe arthritis, so on and so forth. Your body's actually attacking itself because there's foreign entities in there, and it doesn't know what it is. So that's one of the big problems with GMO foods, for example. Wow, wow. So, you know, uh, like I said, I, I, know, I know basics. They, they know, him and Jazzy, they know the intricacies of, of all this stuff. So that's, that's why I get so excited anytime I come out here with uh, Byron and Jasmine or we're on the land and, and we're, we're doing a little bit of uh, foraging or whatever. It's, it's, for me, it's always a learning experience and it's something that we want to take and, and share with you guys and uh, show you guys how to live a, a better, healthier lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Body, mind, and spirit. All okay. three, it has to be connected. There is no uh, in-between. Okay, that's our, uh, our chicken pot, basically. When you're processing chicken, you have to dip them in hot water in order to uh, take the feathers off them. So you have to be dipped for about 30 seconds or so in order to pluck them. So we're warming up there now. We're getting ready to harvest today. Oh, get back in there, huh? You're back in there in the bed. What? Now, are, are these uh, uh, layers or are these? These are broilers, which are considered uh, meat hens. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So right now they're uh, probably about uh, 10 weeks old. So we're going to harvest uh, probably one third of them today. It'll probably be about uh, four or five pounds. Okay. And next week it will be six pounds. And the week after that, it should be about seven pounds. So we okay. just finished feeding them on uh, apples for the last two days. Getting them ready for the today's harvest. Yeah, so that's the, the finisher for them. Squeeze now, them now, ready. Byron, uh, your chickens, you let them free range too around yes, here. Sir, yeah, the, uh, and it's funny because uh, a lot of the medicines that we'll pick out in the yard in the summertime, they go and they eat just that. Wow. Eh? So they know exactly what the medicines are. Wow. So not only are we having good food for our chicken, there's actually medicines in the meat from them eating the medicines in the yard. So it's uh, full jam, they're pretty intelligent. So a little bit different uh, between uh, having chickens raised like this here, your own kind of organic uh, chickens, free, free ranging around the yard and stuff, uh, versus, um, you know, the ones that are yes. lived, lived in, in a cage. Four weeks in a cage. Wake it, Byron, so. Uh, yeah, they have a great life. They, uh, they live probably about three times, uh, sometimes four times longer than what a normal chicken would be in any kind of an industrial setting, whatever. Uh, they're free range out in the yard, so they're free. And they live probably twice, three times longer than another chicken. So when we harvest these chickens, we feel good about harvesting these chickens, that we give them a better life, kind of like we saved them, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, and to eat healthier. Uh, the free range of course is all about being free. So uh, we smudge for them, we give thanks, we give offerings to them, tobacco offering. So the energy and intent we put into that animal 
We'll get it back when we consume that food. It is body, mind, spirit, so you have to look at it again at all three. Right on. And, and another benefit to having chickens and having them free ranging around your on your on your property is uh, they'll they'll eat a lot of the the bugs and stuff. We uh, have no insects. Even yeah. our garden, they'll go through all our gardens, summertime, whatever. So we have no, we have to use any pesticides. Everything's all organic. Uh, all the chicken crap is all used for fertilizer. So all our fertilizer is all organic. So they get back in so many ways. Uh, nothing is wasted. It's yeah. Like, uh, yeah. So uh, I think nitrogen or something, is it, comes from? Nitrogen, yeah. So And that's very important for fertilizing uh, a lot of the plants. Well, and, certain uh, vegetables, potatoes, no, because it will it'll ruin your potatoes. It'll grow all stock and you won't get any potato. But it's something as far as a onion or broccoli or cabbage it just rhubarb too i heard ginormous i haven't tried rhubarb i guess it would be the same uh, i heard yeah. rhubarb yeah but so yeah. stock stock plants basically uh, plants that you feed on stock yeah green. Green. green yeah like yeah, leafy yeah greens yeah so now we're coming in to see our laying hands hi linda you got these named some of them are named yeah and look what we got here we got a couple of eggs right here and this one two there and i'm not sure if there's any over in the other one hi girls hi might be a little camera shy i'm not sure hi linda hi pepper hi puppy yeah happy chickies they're getting wow. all organic they're free range every day so they're eating all the bugs and all the leaves and little medicine to the grass uh 12 chickens will get the uh, roughly about 12 eggs a day wow so that's two meals a day, half dozen each meal. So look at it that way. Yeah. And if you mix uh, an egg with a potato, it's actually what we call a complete protein. So it's uh, enough to sustain somebody in all the amino acid profile. <laughs> See what I mean? See what I mean? It's uh, like education, uh, health 101 here each and every trip. Thanks, Byron. No problem, Chuck.